It's actually the easiest thing that you can do with your life. You were created for this. You were shaped in the image and the likeness of God. He breathed into our forefathers' nostrils, Adam, the breath of life, and made him a living soul. The whole purpose of man was to walk in this glory and this union with the living God. Darkness came in. Jesus Christ came as the light, shoved all the darkness out, drove it all away. All you and I have to do is be willing to follow him, shove all the darkness out. Amen. Let the light of Christ shine. No darkness will be around. May I just have the most beautiful life you can imagine. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Oh, feel me. Feel me. Feel me. Now, Lord, feel me. Oh, feel me. Lord, feel me. Now, Lord Jesus, feel 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 now, Holy Spirit, feel Thank you, Father. Feel Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you know, the Lord uh, has anointed us to be able to worship Him. He first anointed us to be able to walk with Him. You read in Luke chapter 1, verse 35, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the Spirit of the Most High shall overshadow you. The holy thing that should be born in you should be called the Son of God. The Holy Ghost came on Mary, not unlike he had come upon many others before the day of Mary. It's just that a special anointing that created a special miracle took place that day when Jesus was conceived in the womb of Mary. When the eternal word of God became a holy embryo, as it were. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The very seed of God. The receipt of God impregnated man. And there, in that beautiful, wonderful, glorious work of redemption, God took upon the, the nature, as it were, the shape and the form, sinful flesh. Amen. Amen. That's what he did. Hallelujah. Lived without sin, showed that sin had no place in the body, condemned sin in the flesh. Amen. That's what he did condemned sin in the flesh. He said, doesn't, this body, this flesh was not created to walk around in a demonic realm being filled with devils and sickness and disease and torment to ultimately uh, find its place in a grave all decayed. No, no. He rose up from the dead, proven it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The death has no power upon the body. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That the body could be changed. Hallelujah. Through the power of the resurrection. To live eternally in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Father, for the work of grace, the resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm here to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to you. But first and foremost, I want you to understand that God's ready to make you hungry. Yeah. Holy Spirit's ready to make you thirsty for the things that only He can do. And we become hungry and thirsty for Him. I'm tell you what, He's going to come and fill you. And you're going to find that there truly is an abundant life. There is a place of glory. Mm -hmm. There's a place that would ultimately be like a light shining to a lost and dark, a dying world. It won't be hard to see people come into the kingdom of God. They'll lay hold of you. Yeah. Isaiah 55, 5. Mm -hmm. They'll cleave unto you. They'll recognize that God is with you. And, 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 and my goodness, you, nations will grab a hold of you. In fact, nations will come to you and cleave to you, recognizing that God is in your midst. We have to see a great moving of God in our lives if we're going to participate with what Father has, is sovereignly doing. Concordia, uh, Missouri, a population of 1,200 people, a little girl sitting in a Methodist church one morning was touched by a sovereign move of God. Her name was Catherine Coleman. Nobody in no place. 
going nowhere. But when God apprehends a person, a young man who is, ra who is really rejected by his parents, pretty much raised in an orphanage in a backwoods town of nowhere, the power of God came upon him and touched him in a little tent revival in, that the Nazarenes were doing, the church of the Nazarene was doing. The power of God laid hold of him and he shaped the world for Jesus. His name was Jack Cole. God today is raising up people everywhere. He's handpicking people everywhere who just are willing to respond to the Holy Ghost, who's producing great longings on the inside of us. I know the King James called it groanings that could not be uttered. Well, groanings that could not be uttered are the deep, deepest longings and passions of the soul, which is hunger. There's probably no greater passions within man than the passion for thirst and the passion for hunger. Those are great driving passions that uh, once uh, you've gotten real thirsty, you uh, obviously can relate to the power of that passion. Nothing else matters. Yeah. Everything else becomes nothing. You can, if you're thirsty and you've got a pile of everything, of all that you've ever sought after and labored and worked hard for, you would exchange it all for a drink because thirsty is such a powerful passion. Hungry works second to thirsty. And God wants to fill you with a thirst and a hunger and a longing for his presence. It's free, but it's not cheap. Mm. Father has poured out his spirit upon all flesh, but it's still sacred nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Papa's not going to allow things to be mis mixed up and, 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 and uh, shuffled around with his sacred Holy Spirit. It's so, the Holy Spirit is so precious to him. He needs to become so precious to us. Jesus said, speaking of that, that passion, that sacredness, that position that the Holy Spirit has within the heart of the Father, the protection that the Father has towards the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, you can say all manner of evil against me and against the Father. You can slander us, curse us, and blaspheme us, but don't touch the Holy Spirit. And I, I pray today that things will begin to change in your life and you'll understand that if you'll just begin to do what God has anointed you to do. He's anointed you, first of all, to be able to walk with Him. What a privilege. What a glorious privilege. Don't make it up as you go. Just worship the Lord. He has anointed us, second of all, to worship Him. And, you know, when you understand worship, worship, all worship typifies Jesus Christ. There's no sacrifice that didn't typify Jesus Christ. All worship began with the concept of bringing an offering that typified Jesus. What a wonderful privilege. Huh? I tell you, if you want to understand the joys of life, you've got to learn to give. You have to learn to give. Mm -hmm. God allowed us to enter into the joys of life uh, that is unmeasurable and unlimited because he was willing to give the most generous gift that was possible to give, and that was the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gift of the eternal word, the gift of redemption. Oh, when you learn how to give, when you learn how to give joy when somebody's yeah. giving you anger, when you learn how to give peace when somebody's <laughs> giving you strife, when you learn how to give love when somebody's giving you hate, when you learn to walk in the principles of the Spirit, the laws of the Spirit, oh, what a beautiful, wonderful existence it is. Yeah. You don't have to try to figure out what to do or how to respond. I'm going to tell you, you can be governed by the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he said, bless those that persecute you, you'll never have a bad thing to say about anybody ever again. That's good. Period. We want to invite you into the school of the Spirit because it's only those people who are touched by the Holy Ghost, transformed by the Spirit of the Lord, who feel the tuggings of God and then are allowing, uh, are, are, are allowing God to work because they willingly respond to Him that are going to a be able to go to that place that Christ Jesus is raising His church up to go to right now. It isn't going to be like the times of the past. There's so much more to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I've watched as... So many wonderful men and women of God over my life uh, have said that and made that statement. There's so much more to the Holy Ghost. And they were moving in great power and authority in God. And yet they're saying, there is so much more to the Holy Spirit. And there is so much more to the Holy Spirit. He's the very definition of the life of God. He's the very fullness of the life of God come to you and me to give to us things that go way beyond all that we can think or ask. All we need to do is be willing to come into the school of the Spirit and be taught of Him. Jesus said in John 14, 26, He shall teach you everything. Amen. Amen. And so there's nothing you're going to learn apart from Him that is of any value. All of it is fading. It's going to pass away. It may work for a little while, but I'm going to tell you right now, there's only one thing that lives and abides forever. There's only really one realm of reality and truth, and that is that which is expressed in the Word of God, which God has made known to us, and which the Holy Spirit has come to lead us and guide us into. 
Now you're going to have to shove all that other stuff out. It's your choice. We all stand at the crossroads of decisions continually. Where are we going to be selfish and stingy and we're going to be mad and angry where we're going to get back, slap back. We're going to respond in a way that is, at, that is in the realm of darkness. Or we can follow the Holy Ghost. Let him come fill us with love. As we just simply say, feel me. Feel me. Feel me. Hallelujah. That's God's great passion and desire. Did you know that? But you, you, can't, you can't have your own doctrines and your own ideas. You can't have a worry mentality. You can't have a I'm all alone and fighting the devil by myself mentality. You can't have that kind of mentality. Nobody cares mentality. You can't have that. You need to understand how easy it is the, for you to turn everything around and make it so positive and so glorious and so full of life. You know how you make it so positive and glorious when somebody's persecuting you and coming at you and with all kinds of false accusations and laying things on you that are completely crazy and out of, completely out of pocket? Huh? You just begin to bless. Now you're completely controlling the situation under the authority of the word by the Holy Ghost. And it turns it all the way around. And suddenly you create an atmosphere of miracles, an atmosphere of signs and wonders, an atmosphere of the wonderful works of Jesus Christ. It's true. I'll talk more about that. I'm just back. Been away for 30 days. Good to see you. Glad you're here. God's going to touch you today. It's going to work a miracle for you. It's going to change you. There's nothing about your life that you should want to hang on to. Except for Jesus. And when you're born of the Spirit, Christ is formed in your heart by the Holy Ghost, and you're like a newborn baby, and now you've got to grow and mature. And anything about your life that you want to hang on to, somebody has messed with you and deceived you. There's nothing about your life that you want to hang on to. In every dimension of your life, you want to be conformed to the image of the Son. That's how, what God has predestinated us to do. And He's got a sovereign working power that's going to bring, bring it to pass. I just quoted Romans 8, uh, 28, correct? And then when you hit 8, 29, and when you 8, 32, now, he who spared not his own son, but offered him up for all of our sins, how much more shall he now also freely give it to us all things by him? But you go back to verse 29, he's predestinated us to be conformed to the image of the son, that in all things he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just being seen to be the family of God. Well, how are you going to grow and how are you going to mature? Because you're going to be willing to come under the authority, leadership, mentorship, teacher, parentage Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Yes, that's, not, that's not mystical or esoteric. It's just that we don't want to do it. We want it our way. I believe if God's people would take Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 and say, okay, I'm going to live by this, the whole world would be changed. The whole world the whole world would be changed. Just Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Just, just three simple chapters in the Bible where Jesus preaches one sermon. Your life would be changed. You wouldn't be able to do things the way you do them ever again. You discover your great need for the Holy Ghost. You discover truly that, John, that Jesus knew what he was talking about. And it's an amazing thing. He knew exactly what he was talking about in John 15, 5 when he said, You can do nothing without me. He knew exactly what he was talking about. He's amazing. He knew exactly what he was talking about could do nothing without me how many people live and die and never really truly realize that never experience it we had a great move of God in um, in Nepal and God is God the Holy Spirit's reaching to the unreached people groups like never before the kingdom of Kashmir will not be able to be walled up against the kingdom of God and of his Christ much longer. Amen. A great moving of the Holy Ghost goes on in North Korea right now. But the government of North Korea will not be able to stop the things that the Holy Spirit has purposed to do among the people of the Holy Ghost. Because that's what Korea was known of, known as in the late 1800s, early 1900s. They were the people of the Holy Ghost. Peaceful unification is coming. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine in a very short period of time, the walls that hinder the gospel from being preached in Saudi Arabia comes down, Syria comes down, Libya, so that we can do mass evangelism crusades in Benghazi, Damascus, Mecca, Tehran, Iran, Azerbaijan. Once again, 
the, that those nations that were claimed in the, by as, as quickly as the the year the second century after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, like Georgia and Armenia, will burn with the fire and the glory of God once again. Hallelujah. Sikatataya. Kyrgyzstan is ready to be harvested. Tajikistan. <laughs> Turkmenistan. All the empire of the Ottoman will burn with the power and the glory of God. All ancient Macedonia will be on fire. The Czech Republic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truth. I was uh, talking to a dear friend of mine. God used him in an amazing way in his life. And so many years later, if I say his name, everybody knows his name, and I'm not going to say his name. I'm just going to keep it. I'll just keep it hidden Jesus this morning, okay? And I said, brother. Of course, I didn't say brother. I said his name. I said, I can't believe what I encountered in Tokyo, in Japan. I preached 26 meetings in Japan. Um... We just came from Okinawa on, what day did we land? We land on Tuesday? No, we land on Tuesday. We landed here on Tuesday. We were here on Wednesday night. And so there is a video that's up on YouTube, thanks to Adam and Cade and others that worked to put it up there. It kind of gives an overview, because I can't go through that. I'm not going to go through that again, I don't believe. I'm not really in control. I'm just walking step by step. Huh. For love, he's put a spirit within me and he speaks his words through my tongue. Amen. Amen. I'm a kultastaya. I don't have to just quote the verse of scripture. That verse of scripture just tells me what's going on in my life and it's wonderful. Wow, is that what's happening to me? <laughs> it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, I feel better now. I thought there was something wrong. I was a little bit, I think were a little bit different than when everybody else was doing it. Man, I'm glad I've got a confirmation that this is God, the Holy Ghost at work. And, and you know, at these, that, that's the way it should be. When we've been touched by the Lord, the fruits of our lives should uh, be testified by the Word of God, should be borne out by the Word of God. Yeah. Instead of looking, staring at the Word of God, trying to figure out how you're legalistically going to bring that to pass through your own discipline and effort. Huh? Oh, dear people, I'm inviting you into the school of the Spirit in a deeper way than you've ever come before, to come be taught of the Holy Ghost, come walk with Him, to understand that you've not begun in the Spirit to be finished by the flesh, you've begun in the Spirit to be finished by the Spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord knows exactly what He's doing. You and I are going to have to fall in love with the Holy Ghost if we want to participate with this great end-time harvest that He's bringing in. But at any rate, I said, bro, I said, I could imagine. He said, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I was there in the mid-90s. And so we, we talked a while, and he basically started giving the statistics I was getting ready to give to him. I came into Tokyo after being in, after we did a, a wonderful crusade, saw many great signs, wonders, and miracles take place in southern Nepal in a region that we had never been before in the nation, very strategic area. Um, we, that whole region of southern Nepal, northern India, Kashmir, uh, it's a very, a very unreached region, and you know we, we left there, went to South Korea, great time in South Korea. Uh, the the prophetess of the nation, who's been around for a long time, she Deborah, um, oh, uh, came to one of the meetings, and power of God touched her, and she's boy, she just went after it in the spirit, proclaiming and confirming the things that the Lord had done and sent us and how he had sent us to South Korea and some of the things that the Lord had already showed me about North Korea. God, T.L. Osborne had prophesied to her back in 1970 about her role in North Korea. And, uh, you know, and then she started, she's actually has, she actually oversees Christ for the Nations, uh, Korea, which, you know, that most of you would understand Christ for the Nations. Most of you know about Christ for the Nations, right? Gordon Lindsay, what God did through that businessman. And it was actually at Christ for the Nations that T.L. prophesied over her. Then she followed us around in Japan. Hallelujah. She left everything she was doing. What a blessing. Praise God. You know, there is a very big world, and, it's, and there's a lot of unreached people. And there's a lot of things God wants to do through our lives, and we allow Satan to trap us into false 
false worlds, false realities, false things, things that don't even matter, things that aren't going to change anybody's heart, including our own. Oh, but if we should seek the Lord while he may be found, should we call upon his name while he is near? Oh, that's Isaiah 55 I'm quoting, you know. I like to preach on Isaiah 55. might preach on it tonight if I don't preach on faith. I got all kinds of things I'd like to preach on. Somebody said, are you up for all these meetings? What do you mean? Of course I am. Are we wearing you out? Not a chance. I'm continually being refreshed in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. One of the people that was with us that was been helping to organize the meetings and had been planting churches all over Japan said, today holiday. I said, praise God. You know, we, we left one place, got, in, got on, a, on an airplane, flew somewhere, took a long journey in a car. Today's holiday. Praise God, it's a good holiday. You know, got up early. <laughs> Meeting tonight at 7. So I did. I have a bit of a holiday. <laughs> I only preached one meeting that night. And that's pretty much how it went. And I'm happy to do that. I want you to go do that too. Holy Ghost meetings. Signs, wonders, and miracles meetings. Meetings that Jesus is walking around and touching people's lives. Hallelujah. Praise God. But Tokyo was a, a shock to me. I, realized, I did not realize that Japan was an unreached people group. We think of Japan as a free republic, a democracy. It's an unreached people group. It's a nation that has not been reached for Jesus. So sad. I, I stood there and I was looking at these very high buildings. I mean, 47, 48 stories, not just one, hundreds, more than you can count. 28 million people, the largest city in the world. When I got into town and the pastors picked me up at the airport, I said to them, I said, so pastor, and then just kind of general statement in the car. How many churches in Tokyo? Well, there's 28 million people here. There's 2,000 churches. I said, 2,000? So there's about 2,000 in my little town of 3 million. I said, they must be big. I said, no, pastor. they only about 30 people on average, 20 to 30 people. And it was a shock to me. Then I went to the church that night and I looked at, I looked at starving, starving, lonely, forgotten people of God. And of course, we hit it hard. We just hit it hard. And we hit it hard in the Holy Ghost. You know, here's how I hit it hard in the Holy Ghost. I cry out to the Father and I say, Lord, flood me with your glory. Flood me with your glory. Feel me that rivers may flood out of my soul. God made Jesus Christ a provision for our redemption. And Jesus made us a new creation so that we could be carriers of his anointing and be that source by which, that partnership by which he floods the nations with his glory so that you and I can go and make disciples out of all nations. And um, I said to the Lord, I said, Father, what's wrong in this place? What's going on? I said, is this really a reality? Does this show to us the condition of the church? Is this really a fruit of the authority and the power that we've walked in? I, I said, Lord, you look very, very small here. And the devil is huge. I look at this empire of men. I look at the strongholds of Satan. I look at in the midst of an opportunity at the end of World War II, we could have flooded that nation with Holy Ghost evangelists, but nobody went, or very few went. Before I had left to go to Japan, I, was, I had met with some of the leaders of Back to Jerusalem in Hong Kong. And um, they knew I was going to Japan. And I said, yeah. I said, we're going to go in Japan. God's going to do signs, wonders, miracles, break that nation open. They knew things I didn't know. They said, 
you know missionaries are afraid of the nation. I said, they are. He said, yeah, because it's too pricey. It's too expensive. Costs too much money to live there. He said, one of the, house, one of the, one of the leaders said to me, said, you're going to be shocked what God's going, uh, 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 the state of uh, the situation in Japan, but we know that God's going to use you. Well, I had no idea what they're talking about. Of course, I knew I was, I just, I focused in on, you know, uh, we know God's going to use you. Amen. I know that too. We're praising God. For that. Praise the Lord. Look, praise God for confirmation. Amen. I don't know. I didn't know anything about the shock. And, uh, Father, I thank you for grab, holding of it, grabbing the hold of every heart here. Making these things relevant to each individual life. Causing each person to respond to the opportunity that you've given to us to live out our lives now, right now, mm -hmm. in the kingdom. To right now live in a heavenly realm, yeah. in a heavenly place, as citizens of heaven, seated in a heavenly place, blessed with all spiritual blessings in a heavenly place. Yeah. And I mean, I was in anguish about the whole thing. And now I'm starting to get mad. I really, I started getting mad. Now, this just isn't even right. This isn't right. We got to Osaka. And um, in Osaka, I said to the pastor, so how many, how many churches here? He said, well, there's 8.6 million in this town. We have 800 churches. I basically said the same thing, just role playing. <laughs> I said, they must be big churches. He said, no, the average size is 10 to 20. A little more towards 10. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm now, I'm somewhere between sobbing and fight, fist fighting mad. I'm telling you, I really, I just, how can these things be? How can this be? The church of Nepal, the, I was, when, I, when I landed in Nepal, the, where they had the pastor's meeting for me was at the first church in Nepal built in 1961 and started in 1953 by the first missionary that came to Nepal, 1953. I took a picture of the sign so that everybody could see that. I'm going to post it up on my Facebook and elsewhere because people don't realize it. Nepal has more Christians, more Holy Ghost move of God in it right now. And it's been, it has been sealed off as the kingdom of Hinduism under a dictatorship of a monarch for 2,000 years. And there's more Holy Ghost filled people in Nepal than there is in the nation of Japan. And the gospel first came to Japan in the late 1800s. I mean, I'm talking about something more than just Roman Catholicism. So I wasn't going to repeat that. I, I said, you know, I, well, I said, well, there's about 800 churches. I repeated, I said, there's about 800 churches and about average of 30 people. And Elizabeth said, Dad, that's not what they said. I said, they wrong. I'm not going to, I'm not repeating what they said. They <laughs> said they was 10 to 20. And then it got, you know, it got confirmed. I said, Lord, please, 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 Lord, what's going on? And then mom was in anguish of soul, and I'm like, you know, I'm, how do you even begin in a nation like this? Like, I'm thinking, I'm going to go get every evangelist I know, and I'm going to bring them here. I'm going to go get every missionary I possibly can, and I'm going to get them here. We're going to do whatever we are. We're going to Facebook this, tweet it. We're going to call everybody we know to get them over here. What do we got to do? How do you even begin in a nation like this? And it was a bit despairing for me. And the Lord came to me at 5 o'clock in the morning. And he whispered to me. The Lord speaks to me. And when he speaks to me, he always speaks scripture to me. Let me tell you something. I was around the older men of God that flowed in the word of knowledge. Very accurate word of knowledge. And they always give word of knowledge by quoting the scripture. Amen. And then that, that word of knowledge ultimately just was just pinpointed. Here's what's going on. Yes, sometimes it was an address and a telephone number associated with it and a name and a revelation of what kind of disease or sickness or problem a person was having, but it was really just all around the Word of God. Listen, people speak, don't speak other things, speak the Word. People think they need to go pull rabbits out of the, 
out of the hat. I ain't going to change nobody. You didn't go read poems. You listened to me. Read dreams. Go read Jeremiah 23. You'll train yourself about reading dreams. Dream reader. Listen to me. Don't mess with the Holy Ghost. Try to run interference is what God wants to do. I'm going to just get after that for just a minute. There is nothing more powerful than the simple message that Jesus Christ came, was born of a virgin, died at Calvary's cross, rose the third day, sent up on high, and through his name and by his name you may be saved. Nothing more powerful than that. Nothing more powerful than that. Nothing can change the heart of any man like that. Nothing, 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 nothing. No sign, no wonder, no miracle. Nothing is more powerful, no greater sign, no greater wonder, no greater miracle, no greater working power than that simple message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, you must be saved. Repent and believe. You've got power right now. You're listening to me. This is proven over and again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I need to come up with something new. Huh? Are you listening to me? I pray you are in Jesus' name. Let the word of God abide forever for you and with you because it will, whether you agree or not. All grasses, all, men, all flesh is, is the flower of the field. And, you know, it's like the grass of the field, and the flower of the field it withers and dies and is remembered no more. But the word of God abides forever. And this is the word which we preach to you by the gospel. The Lord came whisper to me in the morning, says, Mark, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. I'm just looking for somebody to agree with me. Well, we believe that all authority is given to him in heaven, but we don't believe all authority is given to him in earth. Well, maybe we do, but it's never turned into faith. You know, the devil's believing and ain't profited them nothing. Ask James, right? We hear the word of God. Or we read the word of God and we say, oh, I believe that. But when you begin to obey it and move out in it, then faith comes. Because faith is something that belongs to the working power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus introduced faith to us when he responded to the centurion's awe of him. Because he is faith. He's the word. Amen. Amen. He is faith. And I'll prove that to you. I'll talk to you more about that later. Not for intellectual purposes. Not so you know another Bible story. Not so you know more Bible facts. Not so that you're going to get a degree in theology. But only so that you can understand how to flow and function, operate with God. That's it. If you sit around and dry lab it all day long, theorizing, more information, please. Look, the information in the Word of God is simply given to us so that we know how to cooperate with the Holy Ghost and do what it is that Jesus did. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, these works shall you do and greater works than these. Who? Anyone. Anyone, read it, John 14, 12, anyone, anyone that believes, anyone that believes in me, Jesus said, in me, anyone who believes in me. It's kind of like Mark 16, 17. <laughs> These signs shall follow them that believe, hallelujah, in my name, his authority. And then when the Lord spoke that to me, it just, it just rose up in my heart in such a radical way. I just felt like the Lord was just, Helping me to understand that much more about the keys of the kingdom that he's given to us. That whatever we bind on earth should be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth should be loosed in heaven. Because it's the revelation of who he is. It's the revelation that all authority is given to him in Tokyo. Yeah. All authority is given to him in Japan. And you know, we just had things like this go on over and over again. I'm, I could spend... Of course, I've been away for 30 days ministering. I could spend 30 days and more talking about all the things that happened. I could spend 30 days talking about uh, the things that happened in one of the just one of the meetings in Nepal. I mean, <laughs> but I was just so energized by the Holy Ghost to come back to San Diego and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to be that much more passionate than ever before about participating with you as you build a church, a glorious church, a place for your own habitation. You know, if you and I would begin to flow and function in the wonderful beauty of relationship with the Holy Spirit that has been provided for us, it wouldn't take long for three million people in San Diego 
California to have an encounter with God. You're going to have to get rid of a lot of the ideas that you have. You're going to have to shut out a lot of worldly living. But it's, you don't shut out the worldly living because legally you shut out the worldly living. You don't do that. You get hungry and thirsty for the things of the Spirit and your fellowship and communion with the Holy Ghost causes you not to want any of that darkness or even a shade of it or even a shadow of it or even a little sip of it. You just don't want it. You're too happy over here. Fellowshipping in the Holy Ghost. Walking in this glory realm of heaven. When you sit, when you sit in the palace of the king, it is very difficult to sleep in the dump Huh? Listen, it's very, it's very difficult to sleep in the dump of poverty. The dump of the wicked. Your own ideas have to go. Your ideas, my ideas, got to go. Every person in here, every one of us, if we would allow the Holy Spirit to take us and bring us into a place of an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ beyond what we've encountered up to this point, you'd have the same response as Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. You had the same response of Job, Job 34. Once I have spoken, yea, twice. But now I'm speaking no more. I put my hand over my mouth. I abhor myself. <laughs> huh? The perfect man that God called perfect. The one who had a relationship above all others' relationship. The one that was God's champion. When all of a sudden, there was a greater revelation of the Almighty to him. He's like, I am nothing. Redefine it once again for me, Lord. Redefine the spectacular glory of what it means to live with you, walk with you, and know you. Take me out of the prison of religion and let me stand in the halls of the mighty. Hallelujah. God's got an invitation. He's got an invitation for you. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you only know things about him religiously. It doesn't matter if you've known him or known about him. For many years. The Lord wants to take you and I into a place where we can begin to do the works that he did and greater works than these. His heart and his interest is for the poor and the needy, sick and diseased. When uh, John sent disciples to find out whether Jesus was the Christ or whether they should look for another in the selfsame hour, Matthew chapter 11, verse 4, Jesus did many wonders and miracles. The blind saw, the deaf heard, the crippled walked, the dead were raised to life again. The poor had the gospel preached to them. He said, go tell John the works that you see. Go tell John my works. Jesus looks at you and I and says, anyone who believes on me will do these same works. Just previously in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35, he had healed everyone who was sick and everyone who was diseased. Everyone. That's what it says. He's healed everyone. And then he goes and he looks at the people and he goes, Father, look at all of this need. He says, look at all this need. I'm in Tokyo. Look at all this need. Look at all this need. He says, Father, the harvest is plenteous. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at all this need. I'm looking at all these people that could be harvested. All they need is a touch from God. They live in torment. They live in fear. There's so many people in this city that live in torment and fear, depression and anxiety, and the prescriptions for those, those disease states have gone through the roof. Yeah. We're busy about our own thing. We're caught up in our own cares, pursuing our own visions and purposes. The Lord wants to change it. He wants to, he, wants, he wants to fall afresh on us. He wants to fall afresh on us. He wants to give us a heavenly vision. The heavenly vision, Paul described the heavenly vision. When he gave his address to King Agrippa, 
He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He said, God has anointed me. He said it very similar to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 14, uh, forgive me, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, when Jesus quoted Isaiah 61. Paul said a very similar thing concerning the heavenly vision. And as addressed to King Agrippa, he gave me, he appeared to me in the way. He gave me power to turn men from Satan to God. I got power. You have power. We've received divine power to turn men from Satan to God. Not to ask them if they want to turn. To turn them. To turn them. And what happens is the Lord, we, 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 we've not listened to the Lord as we ought. We've been distracted by the powers of darkness who've run interference, created deceptions and lies for us to go play religious games and chase ideas that have no value and no meaning in the kingdom of God. To be stripped of power and stripped of authority because we believed something else. The only way that power and authority will work in our life is because we're doing what the Word of God says because it's the Word of God that empowers us along with the Holy Spirit who's always going to be speaking the Word and doing the Word and manifesting the Word. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He does the Word, speaks the Word, manifests the Word. He's come to speak only about Jesus, to reveal Jesus, to glorify Jesus, to lead into all truth. My Word is truth, Jesus said. Huh? Speaks the truth, does the truth, reveals Jesus. Huh. I want to I let the Holy Spirit have more control over my life. Because when he does, truth will be manifested in my speech, in my life, in my conduct. Jesus will be revealed. Not another Jesus, the same Jesus that they beheld. There on that day, there's recorded in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Same Jesus. I don't have to wonder about what Peter preached. I don't want Peter preached. <laughs> Peter was so radical in his ministry <laughs> that when they heard he was coming to town, they got the sick and laid him in the street. Yeah. Evangelism would go banging on people's doors. Hey, Peter's coming to town. Get you sick out of here. Lay him over here. His shadow, just his shadow will heal him. Just his shadow passing over will heal him. My God, let the church rise again. Yes. That's, that's Pentecost. That's not Pentecost as we've defined it. That's Pentecost where there's a rushing mighty wind. Where the sound of a rushing mighty wind. The presence of the Holy Ghost is so tangible. His glory and His majesty is, is so apparent. And that is a response of obedience to the word, a hungry and thirsty heart to saying, God, all we want is you. All we're doing is looking for your kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That's the state, mind, and heart of the people gathered there in that place when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Jesus said, Father, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. What kind of laborers? The kind of laboring that Jesus was doing in Matthew 9, 35. That's what he's talking about. That's the context. That's the context. We have to abandon our own way. We have to walk away from our own way. I hear Jesus saying to us, just as he said to the two blind men in Matthew, the same chapter, Matthew 9, 28, just previously. Two blind men came worshiping him, saying, we're blind. Yeah. Jesus, give us our sight. Jesus looks at them. Listen to what he says. Do you believe that I am able to do this? And he's looking at you and me, and we want to try to make it all about that. He's talking to us. He gave us, he gave us Matthew 9, 28, because he wanted to address us right now, today, Sunday morning. What is this day? The 17th of November. In the year 2013, as the Spirit is stirring, as the Spirit of God is miracleffet, hovering, brewing over the vastness of that which God has done in the midst of this light of Christ Jesus now shining. Even though the creative miracles and signs and wonders and the creative works of God not seen, God the Holy Ghost is brooding, miracleffet. He's hovering. He's stirring. That God's creative things, that the creative work of Christ Jesus, the creative work of the new man, the power and demonstration of his kingdom may be revealed in this earth. He's looking at you and me in our state, in our situation. He's asking us, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Whatever your need is, whatever the situation, whatever the trouble, whatever the infirmity, whatever the problem, yeah. 
We've got to move away from the confines of our imaginations and, and, and our own pursuits and turn our hearts and say, towards heaven and say, I'm not going to set my affections on earth anymore. Paul showed me how to follow Jesus, how to walk in the anointing. He was an example. He's the first great Christian example, if you would. Don't set your affections on things of this earth. Set them in heaven. Set them at the right hand of the majesty on high where Christ Jesus is. Set your affection on things above. Hallelujah. To have the, our eyes open to understand what's going on at the right hand. Think about this with me, dear people. The spirit of wisdom and revelation would cause you and I to have an event similar to that event that happened to the servant of Elisha. When the spirit of revelation hit him and his eyes were open, he recognized my something similar to what Jacob recognized. I'm in the house of God and didn't know it. The whole, all this, all the earth is filled with his glory. Yes. And it's not the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. It's the angels of, uh, from uh, the heavenly host and the angels of God innumerable. More with us than with them. And believe me, where I was at in Tokyo, I needed that. More is with us than are with them. Open their eyes, Lord. Give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. The eyes of the understanding being open. They may be able to see what, you're in, what are the riches of your inheritance. In them. There's an inheritance that Father has in us. Yeah. Hallelujah. We've been sealed with the inheritance. We've been born into the inheritance. This partnership with Him. All authority is given unto me, Jesus said, in heaven and earth. I'm looking for somebody to agree with me. Because God's going to operate only in the faith realm. We're going to look at the circumstances. You know, I, I was... We saw so many mentally insane people healed in the crusade, the first day of the crusade in Nepal. People that were crazy demon-possessed, crawling around in the United States or any place else. They would have been locked up in pedicels. They would have been in straitjackets because they're hurting themselves, clawing themselves, gouging themselves. Set free, faces shining with the brightness of Jesus the next day, you know. But I was walking by this one, situ one, one person, and it really helps to emphasize to me, to you. What I'm talking about, I'm not looking at circumstances, but understanding an unseen realm of which God would open our eyes to and cause us to understand, should we we'd be willing to do it God, the Holy Ghost, is, Holy Ghost way? Should we begin to just start worshiping Him and loving Him and just wanting Him and just being passionate for Him and just letting Him do the work? It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, says the Lord. If we just take those things that God has freely given us and begin to just stand here in His presence and worship Him and love Him and be real with Him, not only in the church meeting, but in the home place and in the workplace and in the ac you know, academic place and in the, in the play place, every place, being real with Him. <laughs> Things will happen that have never been told, never been seen. I remember in the last great, great healing revival, great demonstration revival that took place in the late 40s and, and through the 50s, everybody prophesied and said there's a great move of God coming in which everyone will be saved in the place. Everyone will be healed. It will not leave one sick or diseased. It will be just like in the days of Jesus. I believe that. I believe it was the Holy Ghost talking. Great signs and wonders and miracles were taking place while those things were being prophesied. I was in some of those meetings that are recorded that people can still actually even hear on tape today. But there's a, there, there, there's a, a relate. This is all about a relationship and a fellowship. It isn't about a formula. Huh? It isn't about an effort on our part. It's about just standing here in this place and understanding why Genesis, Genesis chapter 1 and 2 is written so that we can understand what our place is, what we were created to do, how easy and how natural it is for us to walk in union with God. This is why it was written. To understand that all of these things and all these testimonies described to us in the Bible isn't just about us looking at somebody else and being stirred in faith. It's faith is, 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 is us being invited into a heavenly realm. God is asking you and I to step off the pages of our life and to step into the pages of the Bible. All, the, he's asking us to come to the same realm that Elijah lived in, the same realm that Jesus lived in, the same realm that Paul lived in. 
We want to make stories out of it. We want to talk about, you know, what the Trinity is like. We don't know anything. You don't, you don't understand. No, you never understand that until you step into fellowship. Until you step into John, until you step into John chapter 17, 22. Where Jesus is praying, saying, Lord, I, or he says, verse 21, make them one just like we're one. <laughs> He said, Father, in verse 20, I gave them the same glory you gave to me that they can be one just like we're one. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You and me, I, you and me and I and them. Yeah. Made perfect in one. Then you start to understand the Trinity. Huh? Yeah. But you won't be so interested in going and trying to divulge, you know, some ideas and concepts to people. You'd rather be going interested in seeing their lives change, yeah. their hearts change, yeah. their bodies healed. Their, yeah. their yeah. You'd be willing to be a part of seeing them step into all of the supernatural blessings and supply of the Spirit. Hallelujah. This is what we want to do. Jesus looks at you and me, and he says, do you believe I'm able to do it? The two blind men said, yes, Lord, you are able. Yes, Lord, you're able. I'll just go ahead and finish telling the story. So that you'll be able to see what's going on rather than just try to guess at it. A woman was completely insane. She was unconscious of where she was. She didn't know who she was. She didn't know where she was. When she was married, first married to her husband, it wasn't the case. Her husband brought her to the meeting. Shh. Being in the state of unconscious of who she was and where she was, a young, beautiful girl. You know, when you're praying for thousands of people, you don't pray long. It's just touch Jesus. Now. I put the red blood of Jesus on you. I break the power of every power in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, you know. It's going bang, 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 right? And then when, I, when I came by her, I just kind of stopped for just a moment because I felt the glorious presence of Jesus just in this, a much more intense way. So I stopped and I reached out and I just put my hand on her cheek. And I said, you healed in Jesus' name. And of course, translators with me says the same thing. And I go walking on by. Her husband speaks English, reaches out and grabs me. Says, come back here, you need to pray more. She's not healed. So I pulled, come back, and I, I looked at him and I said, yeah, she's healed. He looks at her. He looks back at me. He looks at her again. Looks back at me. He says, what are you talking about? Look at her. And I looked at her and I said, yeah, she's healed. He does the same thing. He looks at her. He looks back at me. He looks at her. And, and so I was just going to walk away. I'm not interested in arguing about it. I know today he'll find out tomorrow. Fine. Okay? Why, why should I talk about it? So he, he, it's going to be Christmas in the morning. <laughs> and try to convince him of his present. He'll find out soon enough for himself. <laughs> So I'm just going to walk away because I got to, there's all, goodness gracious. And in a Hindu nation like that, when the crowds are lined up for prayer, more people come. Cars start pulling off the side of the road, buses, people start walking, people are very, walk around everywhere. Everybody's getting in line. Police are now in line. The whole armed police department are now showed up to the meeting they're in line <laughs> first lead them in the sinner's prayer then I, you know pray for them praise god hallelujah and of course some of them are really big and uh, very intimidating and so they follow me around just to make sure that i'm being taken care of i don't really want them to follow me around <laughs> but it's pretty amazing. It's, it's beautiful to see what God the Holy Ghost does in the meeting. But at any rate, I said to the man, I said, bring her here. Just bring her, just bring her over here. You know, when I hear a baby crying, you know what? You know what the baby's saying? Pastor, come pray for me. <laughs> Lord Jesus. 
Blessed baby. Oh, God. Touch her right now, right where it hurts. Right where it's uncomfortable. Fill her with the joy right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands, praise God, and receive. A moment too. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And so I stopped and I said, look, you're looking at her and you're seeing the situation, the circumstance that she's in. I'm looking in heaven and I see Jesus and I see what he is doing and what he's done. We're looking in two different realms. Your realm puts you into a prison and binds you in doubt and unbelief. My realm has liberated me into a place of certainty and faith and confidence. Dear people, you have to understand, really, if we had our churches named after us and what we really believe, it would be like the first church of Thomas. <laughs> the church of Thomas and the renewed. Thomas, 20th, 21st century church. Second church of Thomas. Why? Because we need to see before we believe. We don't call it done. See, for me, it can't be any other way. Amy says to me, she says, my knees hurt. I said, okay, we're going to pray for you. My hand's on you. I'm going to pray for you. She comes back to me and she says, my knees still hurt. I said, sweetheart, you got to understand. The Lord Jesus said, well, the hand's on the sick and they shall recover. Your knee can't hurt. It, it can't be any other way unless God is unethical and he's a liar. So how, how far are we going to go with God here? Oh, oh, are we going to change the scripture? No, man, I'm going to stand. I'm going to take the stand. High. I'm going to stand on the high ground. I'm going to take this stand. His word is true. And all you and I have to do is be willing to stand with him until all the doubts and unbeliefs vaporize in his presence. Until all the hindrances that have stopped us from realizing what God said is true is removed out the way. Hallelujah. I'm not going to preach another gospel. I'm going to stand here. I'm going to say, bring the blind, they'll see. Bring the deaf, they'll hear. When we were in Nepal and they, we, we, we showed up as they're, you know, putting the sound system up and everything and there's a bunch of little kids playing around and at the time there was, I was talking to one of the persons that were, worked for camp, uh, Campus Crusade for Christ, Bill Bright's group. He's there. And he's one of the manage, one of the guys helping set up the crusade. It's very different there. They like the Holy Ghost there. <laughs> Signs, wonders, miracles. Not to say Campus Crusade people don't like the Holy Ghost here. They do. They just, just don't like crazy, crazy charismatics. It's weird. The Holy Ghost isn't weird. He's miraculous. He's amazing. He's beautiful. Wonderful. He's extraordinary. He's drawing all men to Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, look at those boys over there. I said, call them over here. I said, guys. I said, did you know that God, Jesus Christ, is coming to your town today? Their eyes get really big. I said, yeah, he'll be here at noon. Their eyes are really big. God, Jesus Christ. They never heard of God, Jesus Christ. We don't say Lord because they call everybody Lord. They have 33 million gods. None of them can keep up with 33 million gods, so they take the few of their choice, and they're all Lord. And if you're a holy man, you're also Lord. So I say, have you ever heard of the God, Jesus Christ? Not a God, the God, Jesus. No. He's coming to your town today. He'll be here at noon. And he personally told me that he wants to meet you. <laughs> and they take off running to their house. I'm uncertain of it. He said, go preach my word. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. They went everywhere preaching the gospel. Jesus working with them, confirming his word with miracles following. I know he's here. 
I know you. I can. I have re received information from the most honest, ethical, truthful person, faithful, committed, unwavering in commitment person that exists. You can count on his word. He's going to do what he said. He is who he says he is. And he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Says I am no problem. Bring the blind, they'll see. Bring the deaf, they'll hear. The crippled, they'll walk. Some people say, well, why is it that everybody doesn't get healed? Because some people need to be in the meeting for 12 weeks every day to break through all that doubt and unbelief. It's difficult doing signs, wonders, and miracles in Nazareth. It was difficult for Jesus to do signs, wonders, and miracles in Nazareth. One of the biggest enemies of signs, wonders, and miracles that we have to deal with here in the United States is it's God's will for me to be sick because he's being glorified through it. You ain't going to get nothing done in that environment. They receive something from God, their sickness. How are they going to receive something better? Healing. Impossible. They receive something and believe something. There is no basis in Scripture for them to believe. It's prison. I know how great revivals took place in the United States of America in the past, all the way, dating all the way back to the 1600s. They were long extended meetings that lasted 12, 14, 16, 20 weeks. I was born in revivals like that. I literally was born in revivals like that. On my passport, it says birthplace, Caney, Kansas. Oh, you're from Kansas. No, it was a six-week revival. <laughs> and I came during that six-week revival. I was born in a six-week revival <laughs> in Caney, Kansas. I've never been back. <laughs> I never even visited my birthplace. I have no attachment to that birthplace. I do have a great attachment to the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm preaching for one reason. Make you hungry for the presence of Jesus. I'm preaching for one reason. To cast a vision and a purpose, God's purpose for your life. I know you've got a purpose. I know your parents gave you a purpose. I know people around you encouraged you with all these various different purposes. But all they are is different kinds of prisons. So many, I've watched so many people be all earnest and excited about giving their life and service to the Lord. And then, you know, it seems like those who just go ahead and do it, they, they, they seem to get some level of breakthrough. They don't really have any skills or they have not really developed the kind of disciplines in their life that they really should have. That, commit, that produces commitment and faithfulness. Then others who go ahead and they've got a zeal for the Lord, they want to run wide over the Lord, and then they go ahead and they pursue, you know, skills and academics and, you know, and, which are good in terms of developing faithfulness and commitment. They get locked into an earthly vision. They get gripped. They get gripped by earthly cares the mortgage, the payments, the career. I'm not telling anybody to quit their job here today. I'm, all I'm telling you is come follow Jesus. I'm asking you today, I'm asking you to let the Holy Spirit rekindle your first love. I'm asking you to begin to live out everything that you are about. Live it out in the framework of how Jesus put it in Matthew, uh, forgive me, in John chapter 15, verse 7. If you abide in me, in other words, if you draw your identity from me, your value of life, your purpose for living, and my word abides in you, in other words, my word is the inspiration for all your motives, for your thoughts, what you believe you can do, what you know you can't do. Then, whatever you ask, 
it will be done. This is the kind of relationship that's got to happen in our lives. Dear people, you and I are going to have to be willing to make room for the Holy Ghost in a greater way if we're going to see the things that God wants done in the city take place. Right. It's got to happen in your, in your workplace. It's got to happen in the private place of your house. It's got to happen in the play place, every place. When you come in here to where that it's a perfect sacrifice that you're bringing that represents Jesus because there's no such worship outside. There is no kind of worship outside of that. There's no real worship outside of that. It's by the Holy Ghost that you're able now to lift your hands and begin to praise Him. And you praise Him and you worship Him, not as a song that is sung, but as a sacrifice that is given of the heart that's saying, I'm so hungry for you, Lord. We're so needy. We can't do anything without you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we recognize that you come to empower us. You come to glorify Jesus. You're the only one who can make Him known. You come to give to every person here in the meeting, a manifestation of divine glory, of your presence, of your power. How do you know? How are you able? Do you have the skills? How do you know the way to take and shove everything else out that has been an interest, that's been an idol, that's been a God, that's been a distraction, that's been a heartache, to shove it out? All that stuff that came into man's life through disobedience. That many of God's people let it influence them to some degree. How do you just push all of that out? Lay all of that aside. And let the glory of his presence fill you with every good thing. Every good and perfect gift. Every pleasant thing. All things that pertain to life and godliness. This wonderful presence of Jesus that raptures you, that causes you to begin to express a heavenly language that is so beautiful that it's the most beautiful thing you've ever heard. That causes you to be raptured into a realm where all the earthly concerns and all the earthly cares have no value and no meaning. Your heart is now filled with the cares of heaven, yeah. the concerns of heaven. All you want are the things that belong in that realm. Yes. Hallelujah. I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be open today. Mm -hmm. That the things that have blocked you out of the presence of Jesus mm -hmm. will not be able to hinder you anymore. Mm -hmm. The things that have kept you from seeing the companionship and the mentorship of the Holy Spirit will not be able to work against you anymore. I want you to stand with me. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your wonderful presence. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you've come to communicate to us things that go beyond words. Holy Spirit, I ask that the brightness of the glory of your light begin to shine right now into every person's heart. Listen to me. Listen to me. God will not move over top of sin. The Holy Spirit, if you want to understand how the Holy Spirit works, the first thing He does is He comes to convince men of sin. If I'm going to move with them, then that's what I'm going to do. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 16, mm -hmm. verse 8. He's come to convince men of sin. When the light of the Holy Ghost begins to shine upon us and God begins to reveal things that He's not going to work with, He's not going to cooperate with, it. He's showing us that which is, which is our enemy that is keeping us back from the great life that He has for us. The life of faith, the life of, the life of all those things that belong.
to this glorious salvation. Now, you foul spirit of hell, I bind you now in the name of Jesus Christ. That would cause the ears to not be able to hear. You mind-blinding spirit right now in the name of Jesus, I break your power. You foul thing that belongs to religion that will not hear the word of God and bow to the word of God, I bust you now in Jesus' name. I render you powerless. The other thing that the Holy Spirit does is he proves to us that Satan has no more power of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. He proves to us because as long as we give Satan power, I mean, the Holy Ghost would show us some of our sin and we would cry out to God. But if we think that Satan still is dominant and sober us, be, it would be a prison. Still, it still be in prison. Because we might respond, cry out, Oh God, forgive me, have mercy upon me. But somehow we would think that we'd still under the mandate of that power of sin. And it's not true. Because he through death destroyed him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Hebrews 2 14. Jesus said, now is the prince of this world judged. And if, now is he cast out. Has no more place in heaven. It is in the, it is in the same realm, the same world, spiritual world that it was in the days of Job and days of Daniel. He's cast out. He's cast out of the realms of heaven. The realms that God has called you and I to come and live in. I'm asking you today. I watch as so many people have gone astray. I've watched as their children have become prey for the devil. I'm asking you to break the allegiance with the powers of darkness. Amen. I'm asking you to change. I'm asking you, God's asking you to change. Though his word is in my tongue. God's asking you to change. He's not, asking you, he's not asking you to just accommodate some new ideas. He's asking you for a radical change. He's asking you for a radical change. I break the power of that thing that has hindered you. That never again, never again will you come under the authority of Satan, but for the rest of your life, live under the reign of Christ Jesus. Yes. Jesus says, that the Holy Ghost is going to be talking about righteousness. He's going to be revealing righteousness. The Holy Spirit is going to begin to show us not only the righteousness of Jesus, not only the righteousness of the realms of the kingdom of God, but that he's made us righteous so that we can now live in a realm that we can live in this glorious realm. I want you to lift your hands towards heaven because listen to your people. There's some things that God wants to break here today. Listen, if they're not broken now, if these chains are not broken now by the faith of the gospel, they may never be. I'm here today for one purpose, and that is to see change come into your life. I mean, a change that you've never had an opportunity, almost that you've never really even understood how to have an opportunity for. It comes to you today. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today, God's opened up a door for you to step into the realms of heaven. That door is Christ Jesus. He's calling you into a glory realm. That for the rest of your life, you can grow and mature and enjoy. Grow and mature in and enjoy. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. God wants to touch you, whatever you need. He wants to touch you right now. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. He wants to touch you right now. Let him touch you. Right now in Jesus' name. 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 Right now in
Right now, I break the strongholds of the enemy off your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head, the soles of your feet, I put the red blood of Jesus upon you. I break every power. The power of every power that is unlike God in Jesus' name. Right now, let him touch you right now. 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 Fire of God right now in Jesus' name. Fire of God. Hallelujah. So let him touch you right now. Let him touch you right now. Let him touch you right now. Let him touch you. The presence of Jesus is here. He wants to change you. He wants to change everything about your life. Let him touch you right now. Sutakaradasta. Let him touch you right now. Let him touch you right now. Let him touch you right now. Sukura Baba Satatala Nanakatishti Peti Yotalusta. Let him touch you right now. Let him touch you right now. Christine, let him touch you right now. Right there. Let him touch you right now. Touch! 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 Right now. Fire God right there. Fire God right there. Mama Satay Touch. 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 Receive. 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 Right now. Receive. Right now. Sikaraba Baba. Sita la 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 la. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, Jacqueline. Right now. Si raba ba 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 I put the blood of Jesus Christ upon you right now. Touched right now in Jesus' name. Touched right now. Felt. Felt right now. I put the blood of Jesus Christ on you right now. Felt right now. Felt right now. Felt. Right now. Felt. Right now. Felt. Power of God. Power of God. Power of God right there. Power of God. Power of God right there. Power of God right there. Power of God. Jesus' name. Felt. Felt. Touch right now. Touch right now. Touch right now. Touch right now. Right now in Jesus' name. Field right now. Field. Field. Jesus. Field. Field right now. Field right now. Sikara nana masata. Fire God right there. Fire God. Fire! Fire! God. Right now. Felt! Felt. 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 Felt right now. Felt. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? Feel right now. How hungry are you? Feel right now. Feel. 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 Sukurra mama masa take a taste. Touch. How God right there. 
changed right now. Changed by the power of God. Changed. Changed. I put the blood of Jesus Christ upon you right now. Touch. Touched. Touched. Hallelujah. Sickness has to leave your body, has no hold on you. The power of God touches you right now. The fire. The fire. Touch, right? Field. As you begin to sing, you know, you're just singing in your spirit. Spirit of living God, fall afresh on me. <laughs> it isn't any harder than just asking. Really. It's just that we've lived with so many cares of this world. We've lived with so many distractions. We don't know how to receive. But in that relationship, it's so tender, it's so sweet. It's like when I say, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. It would be like me reaching up to give him a kiss. He's going to respond to me. He's not going to turn away. He's going to turn away. It's a fellowship. Right now, in the name of Jesus, power of God falls on me. Power of God. Field. Field. Right now. From the crown of your head, Veronica, to the soles of your feet, overwhelmed with the presence of Jesus. Field. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. In your name. Field. Yes, God. Field. 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 Jesus looks at people, says, do you believe I'm able to do this? And I'm afraid that a lot of people say, no, uh, or I'm not sure. Just say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Just say yes. Just, just say yes to Jesus. Now, in Jesus' name. Field, ha, <laughs> field. 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 Ha, 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 Field. 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 Fire of God right there upon your line. Field. In Jesus' name. The Lord has a the Lord has the sound of a rushing mighty wind for you. He has the sound of a rushing mighty wind for you. He has clothing clothing tongues of fire for you. He does. He's right here. All you have to do is turn your heart towards him and he will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him so that you might be able to see him. Father, I thank you that your fire burns in this place. <laughs> I thank you, Father, that your fire burns in the life of every person in this place.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for a glorious Holy Ghost sweeping revival in the lives of every person in this place to where that every heart is captivated by you and you alone. Where every heart is captivated by you and you alone. Father, I thank you for a great release right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. A great release right now in the name of Jesus from those things that have bound. A great release right now in the name of Jesus for all those things that you desire to fuel up your people with. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. You cannot change your life. You cannot change anything about your life. Anything about your feelings or your attitudes. You can't change it. Only the Holy Spirit can change your life. Only the Holy Spirit can give you the life of Jesus. Give you the life, this glorious life of heaven. He will respond to the hunger of your heart. He will respond to the thirsting of your soul. He will respond to that, that place of prayer that reaches out to Him. That altar that you built in your life. Today I'm asking you, will you also be one of those who will build an altar? And will say to the Lord, the wood is laid in order. Your sacrifice is ready and you'll be that sacrifice. Send your fire now. Will it go beyond? Will it, will, it, will, it, will it go beyond the things that have been right now? Will it go beyond the, that which you've understood right now? Will you let it go beyond that which you've understood up to this point? Will you let it go into a deeper passion of your soul? Will you let these things of God be more real to you? This is what He wants. This is what He desires. He's not going to trespass your will, though. You've got to present yourself a living sacrifice. You've got to be the one that says, break me, melt me, mold me, fill me. And there ain't nothing else there. Because I'm going to tell you, just listen to me right now. Listen to me. If you've got divided affections and a divided heart, some of them are earthly affections and some of them are heavenly. These things aren't going to work in your life. The mercy of God and the love of God will still be there pleading with you and drawing you. But a divided affection is, the, is that, that the Jesus just described when he said whether or not your eye was single. He said if your eye is single, your whole being is filled with light. But if you have a divided interest. Dear people, listen to me. Don't you want the Holy Spirit more than anything else? I mean, don't you want God more than anything else? Don't you want the manifest presence of Jesus more than anything else? When you do, that's what you have. When you do, that's what you have. Right now, in Jesus' name, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I want you to say it with your heart. You can say it out loud. It's a good thing to do. It's amazing the power of words, isn't it? That you can walk up to an altar and stand in front of a preacher and say, I take this man to be my husband or I take this woman to be my wife. And it's done. It's done. So amazing that we can just say, Lord Jesus, 
change. No, 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 no. Don't say this with me. I'm still talking. Just hang on. It's amazing that we can say, Lord Jesus, come change my life. Come make me a new creation. And that the Holy Ghost would come upon us. Just by the asking of our words. I'm going to lead you into prayer. Now. And I want you to say with me, I send away the discouragement. I send away the doubt. I send away the unbelief. I send away the selfishness. The pursuit of my own life and interest. I renounce all of those things. I renounce the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eye. And the pride of life. All that is in this world. I send it away. I don't want it. Holy Spirit. Come reign over my life. Come rule my life. Lord Jesus, be my Lord and Master. Lord Jesus, let my life be lived in you. Fill me with hunger. Fill me with thirsting. That I might understand how to receive all that you freely give him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stir yourself now. Stir up the gift of God in your life. Let the Holy Spirit stir you to a great passion and hunger for the things of heaven till heaven is revealed in you. Amen. For your fire, oh God. Thank you for your fire, oh God. Thank you for your fire, oh God. For we thank you for your fire. Thank you for your mighty wind. Thank you for your mighty wind of revival. Thank you for your mighty wind of faith. Thank you for your mighty wind of faith, oh God. In this place. For your mighty wind of faith. Thank you for your mighty wind of faith, oh God. Lord, I thank you that you open the eyes of your servants so that they may see all the provision that has been freely given to them, all things that belong to your realm, to your glory. Theirs right now. All faith, all power, all ability. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that your people will give themselves to walking in your love. Yes. Walking in your thanksgiving. Thank you. Walking in your praise. Thank you. Walking in this realm of fellowship. Yes. Walking in this place of prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Yes. Father, I thank you right now for this glorious power and authority that is in the realm of faith. Right now, 
in Jesus' name. Right now, be filled with the Spirit of the living God. Right now, be filled with the Spirit. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you are filled with the Spirit, every other kind of Spirit goes. I'm asking you, I am pro- I am pro- claiming the word of faith right now by the Spirit of the Lord. There is absolutely no person in this place that need be left the way they are now. God the Holy Ghost would fill you by the spoken word, by divine power and authority. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled, my mung Jake, with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled, my mung and gay state. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled, my mung and gay state. Be filled, my mung and star of die. Be filled, my mung and rest to die. Be filled, my mung and leg jar to Torah. Be filled, my mung and gay state. Be filled, my mung and gay state. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled right now in Jesus' name. Listen, you can't shut God out because you're focused in on your problems. You'll never fix your problems. Only God can fix your problems. I just came around and laid hands on people so that they would be prepared to receive what I'm doing right now. That's all. I laid hands on you for a miracle so you can be prepared to receive what I'm doing right now. You're un- you must understand that you can't shut God out by clinging to your problems. That's the darkness that invaded Adam's life in the garden. The only way that that darkness will go and be pushed out of your life is if you turn to Christ Jesus, the light of life, and let Him begin to shine fully and radiantly in your life. Because you say, I don't care about all the rest. Oh, when you're captivated by your problems, all that testifies is fruit that you do care about all the rest. And he's asked you to come to Him. Cast all your cares upon Him. He's asked you to renounce the world. He's asked you not to be carried away by the cares of this life. The deceitfulness of riches and the pleasures of this world. But to come to Him. And when you do, when you begin to say to the Lord, All I want is you, Lord. I don't care about anything else. All I want is you. He'll fill your life and He'll make everything perfect. That's how my wife and I ended up with a perfect marriage because we both didn't care about anything else other than Jesus to come fill our life. That's how I individually end up with everything that I want. And I say it's perfect marriage because it's a marriage consecrated to the Lord. I'm not saying that we're not still growing in love and still maturing because we are. It's perfect. It's complete because we're complete in Jesus. I'm using perfect in the realms of complete. But most important is full of goodness. Amen. You can't leave out a church here today all sad and sorrowful looking and say you went to church. You didn't go to church. You went to a religious meeting. I wasn't in the religious meeting, but you were. <laughs> the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to a religious meeting. They never met with Jesus. They thought it was the devil. You can't walk out of here sad and sorrowful, bummed out you got to turn these things over to God. We're talking about you becoming a living sacrifice. We're talking about you offering up all your life to Him. Instead of holding on to this stuff and saying, i got to have this. Ah. <laughs> went, went, went. Just like a little baby. Selfish interest. Yep. Give me this or I'm going to be mad. Give me this or I'm going to be sad. No, 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 no. The Lord ain't going to give that to you. He ain't going to give it to you. If he did, it would destroy you. It would. Those who weren't satisfied with manna in the wilderness, they called for meat. They wanted something to satisfy their fleshly desire, their own interest. The scripture says he sent leanness to their soul. I'm not interested in leanness. Just going to make you that much more, right? Twice plucked up by the roots, clouds without water. No. These are the opportunities for you to cast all of that stuff away like a beggar's garment. Say, Jesus, you're all I'm interested in. All I want is you. That's what the Holy Ghost is doing. You have to recognize 
Is he alongside of you? Are you responding to his drawing? If you're responding to his drawing, he's bringing you out of the world and out of those cares and out of those problems and out of those interests. And he's taking you right to Jesus. He wants to not only be with you, but in you. But if you won't respond to him, if you go, no. Because you're captivated by your problems. You're captivated by your own self-interest. Nothing changes. What has to happen? What has to happen for change to come? You have to respond to the Holy Ghost. That's it. There's no other change. It doesn't exist. Spirit of the Lord come upon you and change you and make you into another person. Spirit of the Lord comes upon you and changes you by, by strengthening you and empowering you. Hallelujah. Huh? Huh? Let me tell you this. You want to have a beautiful life? You want to have a wonderful life? Then learn how to do those things that the Holy Ghost is doing. Learn how to cooperate with them. Learn how to respond to them. Be a giver. And first of all, give yourself to the Father like He gave Himself to you. Give yourself to Jesus like He gave Himself for you. Give yourself to the Holy Spirit like He's come to give Himself to you. Give. Be generous. Jesus said, if you give, it will be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, many heap into your bosom. Paul said, if you give generously, you will reap generously. That's in the realms of finances. But how about in the realms of spiritual? People like punish others. Be mad. Not give them happiness. Not give them blessing. Not give them joy. Because they're undeserving. Because somehow they did something you didn't like. No, give. Because if you give, it's going to come back to you. It's going to come back to you in joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's going to come back to you in peace that passes understanding. It's going to come back to you in love multiplied. It's going to come back to you in the grace of God abounding on you. When you bless, when you give, you bless when you're being cursed. And you don't curse. Curse is taking things away from people. Robbing people. Robbing people of your happiness. Robbing people of your cheerfulness. Robbing people of being pleasant to them and sweet to them. That's being a giver. To give all these good things. Nobody wants anybody giving them frowns and giving them a bad attitude and giving them a hateful attitude. You want people to give you smiles. Give you a good attitude. Be happy that you're around. Well, I'm not going to be happy that you're around till you're happy that I'm around. Till you do what I want you to do, then I'll be happy that you're around. That ain't a giver. And if God would have done that to us, none of us even get started. Because really what we're saying is, I'm not giving you anything till you give it to me first. I'm not giving anything to you until all my requirements are met. He commended his love towards us when we were yet sinners. Christ died for the ungodly. Now, you want to walk with the Holy Ghost? You want to go deeper? Then you're going to have to understand where you're shutting him out. Where you're not receiving. I can tell, I can tell how much you're receiving and how much you're cooperating with the Holy Ghost. As soon as I lay my hands on you, I can tell. Because virtue is in my life, a power and authority of glory. And it, it goes out of my life and it goes into your life. It doesn't matter what you do. You can be standing up. It isn't about standing up, falling down. It's about a virtue that's released. And it's about be, you know how to receive from heaven. Why? Because you're used to cooperating with the Holy Ghost. It's nothing else to do with anything else. Nothing to do with anything but you and your relationship with Jesus Christ. And the way you do what God the Holy Ghost has showed us to do is it's written out in the Word, described in the fruits of the Spirit. As Jesus described in his sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Just say, okay, we're going to do this. I'm going to love the unlovely. 
I'm going to give happiness and grace and peace and mercy to those who are giving me nothing. I'm going to, I'm going to, that's what God, the Holy Ghost is doing. And then you start doing that, you'll find out how easy it is to receive from Him. Amen. You're going to have to learn how to be generous. You have to learn how to be generous. I know that God makes a lot of these adjustments in our life in that concrete realm of materialism. It's true. Because I'm talking about the abstract realm when I'm talking about giving a smile. When I'm talking about giving blessings. When I'm talking about being super sweet to somebody who's super mean to you. Huh? The person who doesn't want you around, you are, you, you are the, way you, the way you act is like, there's nobody that you want around more than them. Because you're generous. You learn these through giving of your finances. And then the Lord keeps multiplying it because that's His law and He's faithful. Because He's actually told you to give in five different realms. Orphans, and I'm going to tell you right now, I want to do more for the orphans. Widows, taking care of the widows. That's just the first two. Taking care of the poor, then taking care of all the traveling ministries, the evangelists, the apostles, those that go to nations with the gospel. And then finally, taking care and supporting the local church. Five regions, five areas, five important budgets to have that very few people have. You say, I'm learning how to be generous. But you learn how to be generous? Father's going to show you how to receive. <laughs> he's going to show you, he's going to overwhelm you with such an abundance of that which you're giving. Give mercy, he'll give you more. He will not withhold. Isn't that beautiful? It's your choice. I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody to leave here walking in your spirit. Your spirit is not a good thing. God, the Holy Spirit, every good thing. Every good thing. He wants you to be filled. Yes. And he wants you to be filled by speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's why when I begin to say in certain contexts, in a certain environment, I begin to say, receive the Holy Ghost. Many people that are more matured in the spirit will begin to speak in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, sing and make a melody in the heart. There'll be expressions of joy and gladness because they know how to receive. That, that area of their life has been matured enough to be able to just flow instantly at the moment. They're just already there. My, my purpose, my passion is to see each person in this place so developed in receiving the things that God the Holy Ghost has for you, that that will just be always there. And then what's going to happen is when the Lord sends you out and you lay hands on the sick, they're going to get healed. When God speaks his word through your mouth to that person who's lost, their heart is going to be struck with the lightnings of God. I am passionate about seeing a church function as the body of Christ. Every member functioning in those things which the Holy Spirit supplies. I know the expression upon the face, the look, the countenance. I know the atmosphere that is there when someone is about ready to speak something of the Holy Ghost or do something in the Holy Ghost. He's poured out a spirit upon all flesh that everybody may prophesy. Speak the very words of God. Have his spirit in you and lo, his word is in your tongue. Wow. I, have, I am passionate about this. I've given my life to see this come to pass. And I have just taken a step up in faith and authority to see it come to pass. I'm going to lay hands on you every meeting. You just might as well, if you come in this place, you just might as well understand I'm going to lay hands on you, and I'm going to be expecting to you to receive more than you've ever received before. I'm going expect to I'm expect to see growth and maturity. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I'm expecting, I'm expecting that the Holy Spirit is going to be so happy 
about our response to him that he comes with the overwhelming unlimited immeasurable grace that only he can bring because we're willing to receive because he's not going to force anything on anyone he's not going to be mixed with anything either see we want him to come and mix with whatever our problems are he's not going to do it you have to cast it aside like a beggar's garment and come to Jesus and let him clothe you hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah amen it's true well, stand with me again. We're going to be back here tonight at 6 o'clock. We want you to come. We, listen, please, we're pressing in that this week we're able to take a hold of our property. And, and, that, and that this week, people that want to have meetings with me, that this week we're going to be able to have the meetings at the new property. Um, that I'm going to be able to start organizing the different teams and the different groups for the things that we're going to do because we're going to do it. We're going to do it in many ways differently as we go after this city, this region, as we go after this nation. I'm believing God to raise up people of strong, passionate, prevailing wind prayer in this place. A prevailing wind prayer that, that know how to come and, and participate in prayer meetings that, that I'm going to be organizing. And um, many other things that the Lord has laid upon my heart. So believe together with us that this week we'll, we will get the keys to this property. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. We ask you right now, do this work. I ask you, Father, for the keys to this property on Carroll Canyon Road and Interstate 15. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, that you give us the capacity to do these works and greater works. Father, that you give us the ability and the power and the authority to do it with the same kind of grace that you do it with. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Well, what we do is we have offering baskets flanked on both sides of the building. And what we want you to do is we want you to worship the Lord. We want you to cooperate with God in the miracle that he wants to work for you. Listen to me. You need a miracle of finances because God's got so many different areas He wants you to be giving in. The church needs a miracle of finances. So let's hook up together for a miracle. Now let's do it God's way. He said, you give and He will give it to you. He said, you, you sow generously and you will reap bountifully and He'll make all grace abound unto you. So we see, it's more than a, just a prayer. It's an act of obedience. So we could all get together and say, yeah, pastor, we're going to hook up with you. Let's hook up together for my finances and, and we'll hook up together for the church ministry finances. We know there's great need. And let's just pray. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. And that's good. But he's laid out in his word. And this is in every respect of our life, not just one. He's laid out in his word an act of obedience that we must cooperate with if we're going to see the miracle of faith. There's going to be a stepping out. Yeah, we pray, but then there's the stepping out. That's the problem. That's where a lot of folks, the stepping out is really where faith begins. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, I prayed the prayer of faith to act the prayer of faith, to do the prayer of faith. So let's hook up together today, right now, in Jesus' name, and let's see this miracle of great provision come for you individually and also come for the church and the ministry the things that we're needing to do. So I, I, I thought that when I got to Japan, you know, we'd be able to see a lot of what we spent in Nepal. We, we'd see it subsidized by their giving. I didn't know it was going to go to churches that the biggest ones are 30. Of course, we had met much bigger meetings than that. Our meetings were, the building was packed out. The first day, the first meeting, it wasn't. First meeting, 20, 30 people. Second meeting, packed out. Third meeting, packed, packed. Fourth meeting, Super packed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And God's going to do the Holy Ghost is going to do the same thing here. And, 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 and by the help and the grace of the, of the Lord, we're going to reach the lost. And we're going to bring them in. They're not going to look at you as they're standing there beside you, all sad and despondent, as I'm talking about joy unspeakable and full of glory. They're going to look at you with joy unspeakable and full of glory and go, listen to the preacher talk about what's in the Bible that you said is true. 
look over at you and go, wow, it matches. Huh? Because I don't know if you realize this or not, but most people are astute enough to be able to tell whether or not you've got what you say you have. Huh? Father's not having another ruined harvest. There are so many people that have been ruined because the power of God, the Holy Ghost, came upon them, touched them. They had a revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord. Then they came to the church and looked around and said, with this many witnesses against him, he can't really be real. With this many people doing these many different things that are contrary to the Bible. Think about it. When you've got a Hindu leader like Mahatma Gandhi who says that if every... that if Christians would act like Jesus. Hinduism would be erased from the face of the world. That's a pretty powerful statement. And we can't say them over there. We've got to say me right here. And I've got to understand, and I've got to come to know that it's all about whether or not I'm going to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. I'm asking you to come with me to a place in God. I'm asking you. I'm pleading with you. I'm begging you. I'm beseeching you by the mercies of Christ Jesus. Please, 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 for the sake of the lost, don't be selfish anymore. Please, for the sake of loss, don't live your own life anymore. Please, for the sake of the lost, don't be stubborn and religious anymore. Please, please, for the sake of Jesus Christ and his glorious church in a light shining in a dark place, give yourself over to the working and the operation of the Holy Ghost because you only want that which he has. You want that atmosphere of divine power and glory. Give yourself over to praise and thanksgiving and worship. Lift up your holy hands in the holy place and watch God do things that defy the imagination. Amen. Come worship the Lord, and after you worship the Lord in giving, find a bunch of people, hug them, bless them, tell them that you love them. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.